Good day, my fellow semen retainers. How are you all? Yes, I was there last night. Watching Mike learn. Inform himself. I'm so proud of him that he's finally, finally learning about the truth and knowledge of semen retention. Once his brain is finally bathed in cum, he may be free. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that is some woo. In fact, I, I think that that is actually what he even said. He said, uh, this is woo, as Fred would say. Like, <laughs> he got called. He kind of called me out. Now, last night, he was, for those who don't know, he was looking at um, some sort of pseudoscientific belief that if you don't come, then somehow it makes you more alpha. It's... It's a thing. There, a, a lot of people come up with reasons as to why other people get girls and they don't. Um... I'll give you a secret. No matter how much you go to the gym, if you're a douche, girls aren't going to like you. Just, you know, FYI. <laughs> is that a Taoist life force thing? Oh, like, may, if it if it is taking off of Tao, Taoism, then it's some sort of weird white version. Is this, is this, yeah, it's basically just another version of NoFap. Actually, you know, this reminds me of something that I found a little bit ago. You know what? Let me, let me show you all. There was something absolutely amazing. You might all have seen people complaining about how the main character of, well, Alloy, from, uh, I haven't actually played the game myself, what is it? Um, what's the game called again? Basically, the main character is rendered in extremely loving detail. It is very, like, the, the rendering capabilities that they- Horizon Zero Dawn, thank you. People have been very annoyed at, like, how lovingly rendered the main character is. And this particular bit, yeah, some of you already know it's coming. This particular bit made me chuckle. So someone said, so we'll just translate. Can you explain to me why the hell Alloy has a beard? And they're just looking at, at the, f Holy shit. So, no, this is how you know that these people who are complaining about Alloy have never been close enough to a girl to realize that people just have some hair on their face. Like, that's a thing. <laughs> Beard. <laughs> no, <laughs> they've never, they've never been close enough to a woman. Oh, it's, it's incredible. It is actually amazing how long people have been complaining about Alloy. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll go off to the other side. Haha. -ha. It is actually amazing how long people have managed to complain about Alloy. Like, this is, nor like, this is normal. And then, again, completely normal. <laughs> The blowers do not stop crying. Well, enjoy your hairy goddess. <laughs> oh. It's like I how do you how do you tell someone that people that like humans have hair? <laughs> like how do you explain that to people? It's, it's one of those things that you wouldn't think you would have to explain to another human being. And yet. Just... 
and uh, like a, a long time ago there was someone who made and i'm 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 not going to look it up I, i'm sure plenty of people remember but there were people <laughs> Sorry. There okay, no, hold on. Um th there were people complaining about um you no know, alloy not being pretty enough. Like what happened to pretty women in video games? And someone made a parody of a like very sort of 60s looking alloy with this impossible smile. And then the people who were complaining about alloy started actually sharing this in earnest. Saying, no, this is how she should actually look. And then people went, you realize that's satire, right? Like, you you realize they're making fun of you with this rendering. And they said, well, it doesn't matter. Because this is how she should look. It's like, you... Oh. How do you... How do you convince people who just haven't, like, seen a woman in real life what women look like? how i love it i kind of love I'll, I'll admit it there is a bit of it that i love also i'm looking in the replies and there are people clowning on this dude and it's actually kind of amazing you have no bitches <laughs> no bitches <laughs> i think it's just nothing but no bitches oh dear God, I'm, I'm, maybe, maybe it's cruel of me to laugh at people like this, but I, it's just too funny. I'm sorry. I, I can't help myself. Oh dear. Of course. Before we get into our main topic, oh, and uh, we have a couple of things. First, we have some new subs. There was someone who subbed before the stream even started, and to be fair, we did start a little bit late, and we will be going um, late. We will be going for three hours, as normal. Um, we're just going to make up for it at the end of the stream. But there was someone who subbed before the stream even started, like, right before the stream started, Leebug has been subbed for two months now, and they just said, The Void, because the stream hadn't started. Three whole hours? That's normal stream length. <laughs> what are you talking about? And then Nested Dreams has been subbed for two months now as well, saying, Ayo, hey, two months of fun streams already. Twitch gotta give you partner now, right? You send them like 600 subs. That's, to be fair, half of that would be Froon Maximus and Fanushka. Because Jesus Christ. But hey, to both of you. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> No, thank you so much, both of you, for helping me, helping, like, support my weird hobbies. And just my work in general. I know a lot of people sub on Twitch, because that's how they, uh, that's how they want to support me. Beyond, like, beyond Patreon or, uh, or YouTube. And I appreciate it. A lot, actually. <laughs> and I quite enjoy streaming, so thank you. Thank you so much. It's... And it's just encouraging that people enjoy these streams so much. I'm glad I get to share these odd things with everyone. Now, before we get into our main topic, I, sw I swear, like, we need just the crypto clown hour. Because there's always something new and dumb in the crypto world. There was apparently, um, I didn't watch the Super Bowl, but there was a website advertising Coinbase. And on this advertisement for Coinbase, there was a QR code. And someone made a very salient point. A quick reminder, please do not scan QR codes that you randomly happen to see. It's an easy way to get your phone hacked and or for attackers to get data, such as financial information or logins from you. 
The co this Coinbase ad is particularly dangerous because we know that people repost Super Bowl ads after the fact. Lots of clips of ads show up on Twitter. Attackers can easily put up their own clip with their own QR code replacing the Coinbase one. And before you know it, all your apes will be gone. <laughs> that will never not be funny. It's literally just clicking on a suspicious link when you're just scanning a random QR code. After many stories like this where Coinbase users have lost millions of dollars over scams and many have blamed Coinbase for not having good customer protections, it's no wonder that they put up an ad that has major security implications. <laughs> All my apes are gone. Not like this. I love... Okay, th there's a fun little detail, actually, relating to the person who lost um, their ape and was using it as their profile picture. Someone actually replied, who is an earnest crypto user, who said, um, you need to change your profile picture now. And then, like, this person, because th the whole idea behind it is code is law, Right. But this person actually removed his profile picture because he technically didn't have the NFT anymore. <laughs> At least they're keeping honest. <laughs> or they could just be a normal... Like, uh, of course, there's now the association with the fact that they've had that ape stolen from them. So they probably don't want to keep it because it's a reminder of how they had their ape stolen. But, well, it's not even their ape. It's just a code that is related to the ape on a website. Um, no, rug, rug pulls aren't slowing down. Hacks aren't slowing down. Security uh, security concerns with, um, with centralized services aren't slowing down. Um, the, the only way that you can really safely work in crypto is by doing the equivalent of meeting out behind an alleyway and giving someone your money while a bunch of cameras are on you because the blockchain is always completely public but you know <laughs> that's neither here nor there speaking of apes are you able to see the report on the Neuralink ape slash monkey testing by elon science team yeah um all of like the 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 majority of the animals that they were testing uh that specifically elon musk's company was testing all of the brain implants that they're trying to convince people to buy. The majority of monkeys ended up um, having severe complications and having to be euthanized, and the others suffered debilitating symptoms. And uh, they're going into human trials. Daddy Musk. Daddy Musk. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, uh, What a... I... I, I, as a personal recommendation, please don't get Neuralink. Please don't do it. Like, just listen to Limetown, okay? Like, it's just going to be Limetown again. And for those of you who have listened to Limetown, you know precisely what I'm talking about. But... <laughs> But it's just like Philip K. Dick. I don't know if anyone else has read uh, A Scanner Darkly, uh, but I I would like to not actually experience what happens in A Scanner Darkly. Thoughts on Musk in general? He's a billionaire. He's just like every other billionaire. What do you want? <laughs> I, I don't feel like there's much more to say about it. Now, we were going to talk about a meat cult today. <laughs> now, of, of course, uh, if we're going to talk about SCP, something that we should bring up is the fact that Peanut is gone. Uh, rest in peace, a real one. Frankly, it was it was kind enough for the artist to let the SCB Foundation use the image of his sculpture for as long as he did. Um, but I don't think he even started creating problems. Like, I don't think that the artist was complaining. I think that this was just an act of goodwill. Um, and I think that's fair. 
I, I think that a lot of people didn't know that um, the artist wasn't super keen on his work being related to the Foundation. Peanut, as he is affectionately known, was originally, you know what? SCP-317. I'll just show you all the um, the image that was used. Or, excuse me, SCP, or oh, which SCP was it? Was it, oh, 137, what am I talking about? 317, right? Or am I just crazy? No, 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 173, I am, apparently, I'm dyslexic. I'm having problems. <laughs> but this image of the sculpture was hosted, like, originally it was used on the 4chan thread that de that detailed the very first SCP, and then people started spinning off of that. But he just kind of grabbed it from the internet, right? He was just trying, trying to make something spooky on the Supernatural board, and it... Um, and it took off from there, and they they kept using the image. Now, the, the the tricky thing is that everything else except for this image was under Creative Commons on the website. This was the last remaining thing that wasn't under Creative Commons, and so they decided to um, retire the image, and I think rather tastefully, um, not replace it. With that 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 really is the best way to go about it, I think. And now um, there is just a void. Yeah, obviously, F Peanut. Uh, the reason he's called Peanut is because he looks like a peanut. But, you know, rest in peace, a real one. Um, it was the right decision, I think, personally. I, I have not been engaged in any of the discourse, uh, but I am entering the discourse anyway. It's probably the right choice. And it's fine. Uh, nope, it, it doesn't have a new image. In fact, let's go onto the SCP website and look it up. SCP-173. Wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There we go. Yep, if we look at the website, then you can all see, it is devoid of peanut. Goodbye, my friend. And that's okay. Entering discourse is always the right choice. Source me. <laughs> no, it's... It, it kind of... I think everyone kind of knew that it had to be done eventually. Either they get permission from the artist who wasn't really keen on doing so. Or they remove it eventually. And this, I, I imagine this was something that they really didn't want to do. But knew that if they wanted to keep the website safe, then that was the, that was the right decision. Have I checked the original artist's work? Oh yeah, he makes some incredible sculptures. Absolutely. Let's have one minute of not blinking to pay respects. Uh. Wait a minute, am I? My eyes are really dry today. I can't. Fuck! Damn it! Ugh. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I wasn't strong. My eyes are so dry today. Ugh. Ugh. Nope. Couldn't do it. Sorry, everyone. Um, Do your minute of no blinking on your own. <laughs> he hates 173. That's how you know a real one. If they don't blink. <laughs> All my homies don't blink. Now, let's let's actually get into the topic today. Oh yeah, um I know I, I know I keep getting distracted, but I wanted to let everyone know I mentioned it on Twitter, but I have applied for a partnership on Twitch now. And now it's just a matter of waiting. No fingers crossed. I, I would rather like to get partnership. Uh, there are a lot of benefits to it. One of one of the big ones is that um, VODs will stick around for two months rather than just two weeks. That'll be nicer. Bezo friend. <laughs> yeah, pick your billionaire, right? 
it all ends up going back to them anyway. Now, today we are going to be looking at one of my favorite little subsets of the SCP universe, Sarcasism. Sarcasism is better known as the meat cult. Maybe. I think a lot of people don't really know um, about Sarcasism. However, they might be familiar with some SCPs that are related to Sarcasism in one way. Basically, just if you want a summary of Sarcasism, especially Neo Sarcasism, just think of like a meaty Ayn Rand. But we're going to be looking at that today. Let's just take a look at the overview to start. Sarcasism, derived from the Greek, uh, sar you know what? I looked at, I looked this up before. Hey, hey, Google Translate. Because I don't think DeepL does this. Here we go. Sarx. Sarx. Okay. Which just means flesh in Greek, is a religious slash philosophical system that encompasses a variety of traditions, beliefs, and spiritual practices largely based on teachings attributed to Grand Carcist Ion, its deified founder. Yeah, from proto Yenesian, I'm not. Yeah, breaker of ropes, and by extension, destroyer of bondage. Uh, sorry, subs. <laughs> Adherents practice ritual cannibalism, human sacrifice, corporeal augmentation, thaumaturgy, dimensional manipulation, and the formation of pacts with otherworldly entities. Organic manipulation has allowed certain sarkites to achieve an anomalous states of being, transcending the physical limitations of baseline humans. I ended up using um, sarca sarcasism in um, the tabletop campaign I did that was set in the SCP universe. Highly secretive, the general public appears to have little to no direct knowledge of their existence. Some organizations are aware of them, such as the Global Occult Coalition and the Horizon Initiative, while the Church of the Broken God views them in apocalyptic terms. Certain splinter sects, such as the Church of Maxwellism, generally view sarcasism as either destroyed thousands of years ago, or as simply an allegory for the imperfection of organic life and for those who are tethered to their base biological nature. Though it hinders investigation, their clandestine nature is ultimately beneficial to the preservation of normalcy. And this is something that I think a lot of people don't know about the SCP Foundation. Their number one directive is... Um, keeping everything under wraps. What system did I use for that campaign? GURPS. GURPS is just very, very useful. <laughs> oh, I got someone in chat addicted to inscription. Good. Play inscription. It's very, really good. Disease is often viewed with reverence, and sarkic shrines have been discovered with offerings of swollen lymph nodes and tumorous growths. Certain sarkic cults treat contagions as consecration, a means to cull the weak and purify the masses, and thus actively seek to ensure their spread. Most, but not all, sarkites display an inherent resistance to pathogens, though it remains unknown if this is an anomalous or naturally occurring attribute. I mean, you, you touch enough meat, right? Oh, speaking of, I have been listening to the Beef and Dairy Network podcast, and that is a goddamn nightmare, and I love it. There's a dude who took the the uh, the host up into space and was like, "Look down there, like we're we're all just doing our best. Uh, every human, every E. coli." <laughs> He's trying to come up with a justification for why he gives unsanit- like, he sells unsanitary beef. Ugh. Like, so maybe they just touch enough meat. Sarkic anomalies are not without risk to their users. While Sarkites are able to augment themselves into physically superior forms, it has been shown that such alterations, or perhaps the secret truths they come to learn along their path to apotheosis, have a degenerative influence on mental stability. The exact cause of this remains unexplained, but it is most exemplified among known Carcists, who frequently display symptoms of psychosis. 
And this makes me think a lot of World of Darkness. Um, like, the, the vampires, uh, how a lot of them just go mad after a while. Uh, there's a particular clan, and I'm forgetting which one, that is very reminiscent of Sarcasism. I remember, uh, this came up last time I was talking about Sarcasism on stream. The Foundation divides known Sarkic cults into two distinct strands, Proto-Sarkic and Neo-Sarkic. A hypothetical third strand, presently designated as Ur-Sarkicism, represents the original teachings of Ion during his life, prior to the collapse of the Adatite civilization. It is likely that this strand of Sarkicism is long extinct. proto sarkic cults tend to be found in insular communities throughout Eurasia's most isolated regions, its followers generally impoverished if self-reliant, humble, and apprehensive towards outsiders. Such groups commonly eschew, uh, am I pronouncing that right? Eschew. Yes. Okay. <laughs> eschew. Such groups commonly eschew modernity, display acute technophobia, and are bound by superstition and taboo. Ah, oh, but losers, they're not going to get near a link, they're just going to get left behind. Losers. In contrast, neo sarkic cults are usually cosmopolitan. I, I mean, is it really technology if it doesn't make you perpetually dizzy and nauseated and gives you brain bleeds? <laughs> In contrast, neo sarkic cults are usually cosmopolitan, publicly embracing modernity and showing no apparent qualms with technology, their public lives differing little from others of their culture and social status. Adherents are primarily affluent families, rich in history and scandal. Both generally follow a single creed whose core beliefs include the following concepts. Apotheosis, the belief that an individual can ascend to godhood. It appears that Sarcasism regards Grand Carcist Ion, and to a lesser extent his Clavigar, as, being, as a being who has undergone apotheosis. For the Proto-Sarkite, apotheosis will be achieved in time and only through Ion. For this Neo-Sarkite, it almost appears that if one had the ability to usurp Ion, it is their right, if not duty, to do so. The path to apotheosis is equal to the will to power. And this is where we kind of start getting into the meaty Ayn Rand bit. Hey, Salted Caracol Muda. Thanks for the 150 bits. Crab? 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 Why crab? You know, there actually is a specific SCP that I wanted to share with all of you that sort of shows off the proto sarkic cults. And you know what? We'll finish the overview and then I'll show you that particular SCP because I think it is especially illustrative of, um, of the proto sarkicism Will. The will to power is the primary driving force of man. The individual seeks to master all things within its domain, ex exerting the discretion the direction of power, efficacy, while other individuals do the same, often in opposition. Will is to power as form is to matter. In turn, desire is the measure of all things. Aha, a neo proverb. Desire is the measure of all things, be unbound from moral tethers. Do as you will, to whom you will. H how do you even build a society based on that? Theophagy. So obviously, um, the, the this is a a made up Greek word with theo. Th think like a uh, theology. So theo is uh, means God or divinity. So think uh, so theology. So theo God ology. Uh, that's study. So the study of God. Then phagi is uh, to consume. So, literally, the consumption of God. You don't. Simple as. Yeah. <laughs> Theophagy, the sacramental consumption of a God. Sarcasism holds that there are many gods in the universe, none of which they worship, and that these entities can be devoured in some fashion. Adherents ultimately believe that this parasitic relationship, whether literal or allegorical, is the primary source of their thaumaturgical abilities. 
sacrifice. Among proto oh my, yeah, um, Christians do do God vor. You're right. Um, the tran transubstantiation when they um, consume the body. Well, Catholics specifically. Um, Protestants do it in an allegorical sense, but my understanding is that um, for Catholics it is more literal. But I'm not I'm I'm not super studied on that part, on that bit of Catholicism. Catholicism is not something with which I am intimately familiar. Only uh, in passing, I'm more familiar with um, like the the literal scripture and um, translation and uh, Protestant religions. Anyway. Sacrifice. Among proto sarkic cults, this appears to manifest, manifest as the sacrifice of the self for the benefit of the many. neo sarkic cults, in stark contrast, believe in the sacrifice of the many for the benefit of the individual. Muscles suffers damage only to heal and become stronger than before. The same can be said for the mind, through developing toleration against conventionally inconceivable things, cycles of destruction and regeneration. Strife, according to sarcasm, is the greatest of tutors. To shepherd the flesh. It is believed that all living things descend from a single progenitor, further explored in the mythology section. Adherents hold that this shared ancestry is the key to corporeal augmentation. I'm not pronouncing that. Further suggesting a singular understanding of genetics, cloaked beneath layers of mysticism. It is the right of the Sarkite to guide and cultivate organic matter. The most skilled flesh crafters are able to steal the genes of other life forms or create entirely new ones after a successful D20 roll. Sorry, this. <laughs> most proto Sarkic sects believe that Ion has achieved or is in the process of achieving apotheosis and, upon the completion of his metamorphosis, will destroy this flawed, stillborn universe, and remake it into a paradise known as the Ikunari, where the many will at long last know salvation and joy beneath rose-colored skies. There are, however, other sects that believe that Ion is dead, having martyred himself to protect humanity from the machinations of the gods. neo sarkic cults noticeably diverge from this interpretation, regarding Ion with a certain amount of indifference. Their only concern is apotheosis, to become like the gods through the acquisition of power, the development of skill, and the severing of ethical tethers that limit the potential of the individual. The Grand Carsus is not viewed as a prophet or a messianic figure, but rather as an individual who came closest to achieving godhood. They dismiss his moral teachings as weakness, ignoring much of the old scripture in favor of rituals that they might exploit. Kind of hate that they named him Ion, because <laughs> it's such a generic science term. I, I can see that. While neo sarkites and proto sarkites share a common mythology and many of the same practices, it may be best to see them as distinct religions. To proto sarkites neo sarkites are heretical, if not utterly profane, more an ideology or philosophy that has appropriated elements of the true faith. This renders neo sarkites especially dangerous, as they lack the ethical and moral restraints common among the older traditions, perhaps going so far as to be its antithesis. There is evidence that neo sarkites have gone so far as to make pacts with the otherworldly beings, archons, that Ion once preached against. Might be pronounced more like Yon. Eon? Eon? Yeah. No, I see what you're saying. Eon, like Ia, Cthulhu Fatagan. I wonder. Hmm. I wonder if there actually is a pronunciation. Anyone? Anywhere? We're gonna go with, you know, I like that better. We're gonna go with Eon. I like that. Ah, uh, do do do. Sarkites, uh, <laughs> talking about meat cults, do 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 do. Sarkites are known to speak and write in the Adatite language. An introduction to Old Adatite is available here, which itself appears to be a syncretism of Proto Uralic, Indo, -Euro Indo European, possibly Davite, and. <laughs> K 
chaos tongue, a foundation term for a poorly understood language. You know what? Hey, Google Translate, we're coming back. Pizza house. Pizza house. Say it slowly now. Pizza house. Pizza house. <laughs> yeah, all right. Pizza house. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, sure. Practitioners of sarcasm do not actually refer to themselves as sarkic, the term a pejorative employed by the ancient Mechanites for their enemies. Uh, they piloted ancient mechs in order to d <laughs> destroy the Sarkites. Oh, that reminds me. Oh, shoot. I have a whole list of things that I want to do for stream. And I need to add this. Um, oh, my God. I cannot believe that it slipped my mind. Uh, where is it? Um, I, I really need to play That Which Faith Demands. Uh, that Which Faith Demands. Okay, perfect. Sorry, just, I have a lot of things to do on stream. Like, I, I have a whole list of things that I intend to do. I mean, here, hell, I'll, I'll read it out to you guys. Um... For things I can repeat, like I can always come back to SCP, and, and we are going to slowly work our way through uh, Web3. Web3 is going just great, um, but I also um, I want to have someone on to, to teach chess, and that'd be fun. We need to play Space Warlord. Uh, I want to eventually read the Final Fantasy house, like just the whole thing on stream with everyone. Um, I will have a stream where I just talk for three hours about tea, and you can't stop me. Uh, we, we have something with Vex coming up. Ha 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 ha. Um, and we need to play That Which Faith Demands. Like, th th those are some of the things that we're going to be doing. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, what was it? I feel like, oh, we're going to play Scorn. We absolutely have to play Scorn when that launches. Okay. Uh, so, uh, syncretism of Proto-Uralic, Indo-European, possibly Davite, and Pizza House, but primarily Proto-Uralic. Practitioners of Sarkicism do not actually refer to themselves as Sarkic, uh, it, the term a pejorative employed by the ancient mech pilots for their enemies. Thought to be their true name, it was adopted by the Global Occult Coalition and later by the Foundation as part of Project Sitra Akra. In truth, Sarkic cults refer to their belief system as Nelka, and under no circumstances are Foundation agents to use Sarkic or its derivatives when infiltrating related cults. Hunger. Nixley. Oh, like it's like Nixley, I guess. Nixley. Nixlika. Okay, Nixlika. I think. I, I'm not terribly good with, <laughs> with phonetics. I'm, I'm partially, I was partially reading it like it was a German word, because that's, that's the language that I'm learning that has, has umlauts. <laughs> Through adopting Mechanite terminology, the Foundation and Global Occult Coalition have unwittingly perpetuated the flesh mechane cosmic narrative of the Kotbg. Church of the Broken God. Took me a moment. I believe this relationship to be the result of self-fulfilling prophecy on the part of the mech pilots. When sarcasm was first encountered, it strongly resembled an end times adversary foretold by mechanite schema known as the flesh, or sarkic in the original Greek. Interestingly, the Mechanites made a connection that was hardly felt by the Sarkites in return. For Zarkicism, the Mechanites were simply another people that stood in their way, not some prophesied spiritual foe. Which is an, an inaccurate and gross simplification of Sarkicism. While this document aims to recognize and correct previous errors, Sarkic and its derivatives remains a normative part of the Foundation lexicon. Ultimately, it is feared that the Foundation and Global Occult, Co uh, Global Occult Coalition know only a fraction of what Sarkicism entails and what its followers intend. 
Based on available information, the speculated goals of Sarkic cults nevertheless represent an SK class dominance shift, including the possibility of an XK class end of the world scenario. There's a part, to, and right, I was saying that um, I really wanted to show a particular SCP that is indicative of proto sarcasm but there's a whole tab that's dedicated to proto sarcasm so uh, we'll get to it, I suppose. Let me see if I can find it. In fact, I think this might be it. Thank you, Metaphysician, for writing all of these. What the? Oh, hey. I did. Guys, we found a hidden. Their scores are there hidden if we highlight them. That's kind of cute. I, I didn't realize that. This is it. Yes. Th this is the one. The late Cornelius P. Bodfell III. Carcist Solkisk, formerly leader, leader of Adatum's Wake. People are, people are trying to help me with pronunciation in chat, and I'm being a bitch. Yeah, when Scorn launches. You know what? Let me check. Hold on. Scorn launch date. Because that game has been in production for like eight years or something. <laughs> one, of, one of the top questions on Google is, will Scorn ever come out? They're talking about October of this year. So, um... I guess that that is something for the far future. <laughs> it is important to understand that sarcasm is not only a system of beliefs, but an ancient culture that has, in secret, preserved its own language, traditions, and societal norms while outwardly adopting the dominant culture of the lands they inhabit. To comprehend the sarcic psychology, one must remember how their minds are shaped by their distinct social environment. Thus, behavior that would be considered beyond the pale to most, murder, torture, R, etc., might be perfectly acceptable among certain Sarkic cults. Uh, for proto sarkites such, such, such actions might be committed zealously for some perceived, perceived greater good. For neo sarkites it manifests in a most libertine manner. To be as gods, one must not be bound by, moral con by mortal concepts of morality. Nothing sacred, nothing taboo. Letters between neo sarkic cult members have been deciphered, revealing a fairly intricate caste system outside their religious hierarchy. Functioning like a form of pedigree, it appears that neo sarkites place heavy emphasis on bloodline, a hidden aristocracy whose marriages form pacts and the foundations of powerful sarkic families, referred to by followers as high bloods, sometimes black bloods. This... <laughs> oh my god, that... Old slushed? I'm not familiar with, with this streamer, but I really like that animated emote. Yeah, they're they're meat rand. It, it, could we have like a meat ein meat ein rand? Meat rand. Uh what are these little bits? The concept does not appear to exist among proto sarkic cults. Indeed, the idea of caste contradicts the egalitarian beliefs common to early sarcasism. And this like be being a play on blue bloods, a term for nobility and other affluent people. Ha ha ha. Pork rand. You know, I, ha I had a realization the other day. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the game Bioshock. The main, well, you know, what is believed to be the main antagonist for a long time, uh, Andrew Ryan, who founded... You founded the setting, Rapture, on Ayn Rand's beliefs. Andrew Ryan and Ayn Rand have the same have the same initials, and I'm so mad that I only realized it just the other day. I'm so mad. <laughs> it had to be it had to be purposeful, right? I know that, like, probably everyone figured it out years before I did. But look, I just was never thinking about it that hard. <laughs> I don't think that Andrew Ryan... Wait. Hold on a second. Uh... Andrew Ryan... 
Uh, hold on. Andrew Ryan Ayn Rand. No, like Andrew Ryan is way more letters. Whatever. I think it's funny. <laughs> the villain is named Atlas. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh my god. I never I never made like the connections terribly strongly. I I know it's not a subtle connection. Look, I know I just wasn't looking for it. One is generally born into sarcasm, with new blood introduced through careful selection. It is difficult to draw a line between cult and family in sarcasm. The recruitment of outsiders is usually unnecessary, as sarkites have little trouble maintaining their numbers, their virility and health apparently unaffected by generations of inbreeding. Wait, Rapture is supposed to be like Galt Skulch. Oh, okay. Even non-Karsists, Karsists and above being biologically immortal, Sarkites have significantly lower rates of mortality when compared to that of an average human, rarely dying before reaching 100 unless by violence or accident. Indeed, a Sarkic community was once discovered by studying late medieval census data and searching for populations with unusually low mortality rates, most especially, most especially those whose numbers were unaffected by pandemics such as the Black Death. Yeah, they're into that shit. Ya ya di pestis da. <laughs> That's a good song. Note, it is also possible that, upon reaching a certain age, Neosarkites falsify their deaths and spend the rest of their anomalously extended lives away from public view. Yeah, th this really, like, the, the Neosarkites really feel like uh, World of Darkness vampires. Though the common Sarkic hierarchy has remained relatively unchanged for over the last 3,000 years, it is in no way universal. The two highest tiers, Ozermok, Grand Karsist, and Klavagar, High Karsist, have not been verified outside of scripture and other documents, rendering it difficult to discern whether these ranks are truly part of the modern Sarkic hierarchy or serve as a mythical foundation. With that said, the standard hierarchy, from highest to lowest, consists of... Uh, Azermok, also known as the Grand Karsis, the highest tier reserved for the Prophet Eon and no other. However, it is believed that there have been pretenders claiming to be the second coming of Eon. Eon himself is further discussed throughout the document. Klavagar. Oh yeah, uh, Triad Sim uh, Simeon. Yeah. Uh, that, that there is a song. Uh, I think it's called. Oh, well, what is it called? You know what? The pest is da. Sorry, it's hurrah hurrah de pest is da. That that's what it is. Not. <laughs> uh, pest, by the way, is the German word for the black plague. The pest. Klavagar. The names of the four Klavagar are presently known, and they appear to have served a role similar to apostles. It is common for Neosarkites to claim ancestry from a Klavagar, despite evidence against that, that possibility. See the hagiography subsection of history for information about individual Klavagar. Karsist. The spiritual and secular leaders among Sarkic organizations. Karsists are considered biologically immortal and vary in form and anomalous ability. All, although all known Karsists appear to have once been non-anomalous humans, only some maintain a human visage. Ooh. It is theorized that they are able to control the Holocaust via the release of complex pheromones or even telepathy. And the Holocaust are a group of anomalous organic entities. Haha. -ha. The Meat Army. Vulutar. Advisors to a Karsist. Predominantly female among proto sarkic cults, where it is synonymous with wise woman, wise woman, wise woman sitting here. <laughs> oh my god. I don't want to think about that. Holocaust. Ika Pika. <laughs> oh my god, how many people remember that? Um, you know what? 
I'm, I'm going to look it up real quick. Let me see if I can... Let, let me see if someone... Oh! Somebody, somebody actually did upload just that clip. This is very important. <laughs> wise woman, wise woman, wise woman sitting here. Wise woman, wise woman, wise woman here. Wise woman, young woman nestling me at her breast. Wise woman, young woman giving me wheels of time are turned. <laughs> it's no froggy song, but it'll do. Oh, I'm happy. That never gets old. Why does that video feel fami familiar? It was covered on Red Letter Media. So, Volotar, a uh, Zend, a middling rank of the Sarkic hierarchy, having a degree of power and protection unlike the Orem. This rank is not recognized by most proto sarkites Orem, the lowest rank of the Sarkic hierarchy. Adherents who do not descend from a Sarkic bloodline begin at this level. Much like Zend, proto sarkites do not typically recognize this rank, as most proto sarkic cults are extremely insular and rarely embrace outsiders. While conversion is also uncommon among neo sarkites they are still known to employ covert proselytism. You had all but erased Froggy Song from your brain? I won't allow that. Mythology. So the cosmology of the observable universe is one among a finite or infinite number of possible universes. That's a pretty big discrepancy, don't you think? Froggy Song Eurobeat Remix when? Don't tempt me. Each universe can in turn be divided, uh, oh, contained within the meta universe. <laughs> Just strap these goggles to your face and, oh my god, did anyone else see that meta ad that was being shown around? It, it like, I, I, apparently that also was being shown on the Super Bowl where it's like there was an animatronic that uh, was saved from being crushed and was able to relive its happy past memories by wearing Oculus. It's like, yeah, the world sucks. You know, everything is terrible. But you can relive the good times. Jesus Christ. Hell world, hell world. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I'm you, you got you guys wanna see it? You you got you guys wanna see it? You you want it? You you, you want it? Yeah. Alright. Okay. Let me just look it up real quick. No, but please do. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's the that's the proper attitude for this stream in general. Oh shit! I forgot to tell all of you. Um, I was looking a little bit closer at uh, Jubilee, the creator of Froggy Song, and she made another like there is an entire episode of the Froggies dedicated entirely to 9/11. And she even wrote a song talking about 9-11 and commemorating it. It's incredible. Uh, I, I don't think that I can show it on stream because she literally animates the twin towers falling <laughs> and, and, plane, and the planes crashing into them. But, you know, just be advised that that exists. It's... it's <laughs> <laughs> it's, I remember... I remember watching that and just kind of my mouth was agape the whole time <laughs> okay let me here we go oh shoot i i have to mute it because 
there is copywritten music in it. Yeah, uh, it has Don't You Forget About Me. But you know what? We don't need the music. Yeah, don't worry about it. So you have animatronics. All right, cute. Jubilee would be proud. Not worth listening to. Nope. I think we can unmute. Nah, we won't unmute. All right, they're dead. GG. God. Ah. Uh, did he just steal it? Hold on a second. Did he just steal it? What? I don't get it. That FNAF lore. <laughs> He's crying. It would have been a mercy. Just... Can I give a piece of advice real quick? If you're going to get a VR headset, don't get an Oculus. I understand that it's tempting because it's so like it's so much cheaper. Like it is significantly cheaper. But if you are going to get into VR, do not get an Oculus. Don't get anything related to Facebook or Meta. Because they keep instituting stricter and stricter restrictions. You need like a Facebook account. And then if your Facebook account gets banned, you lose any games that you buy for it. It's, it's brutal. And you can argue that Steam does the same, but Steam is way less zealous. Um, and there actually is a point where uh, Facebook will delete your account if you're inactive too long on it. Uh, and, like, you don't log on to Facebook. And so people were losing their games a while ago based on that. I don't know if that's still happening. No, like, Oculus is very, very restrictive. Um, let me put it this way. You are paying in other ways. On You are paying in other ways when you get an Oculus. Just get something else. There are other headsets that are a bit more expensive you don't want the shitty little ones anyway it's it's not going to be worth it in the long run they're not going to be made as well they're like if, if you're going to get into vr get something decent just don't get oculus i like i strongly advise against it I personally have an index. I knew that I was like, I knew that I was going to be paying a lot for VR because if I'm going to do VR, I'm going to do it right. And it's fantastic. I, I love it. It's incredible. Um, two thumbs up. Hard recommend on the index. Um, th there are some more that are coming out as well. You might want to look into what HTC has got going. There are, there is more competition showing up in the VR space. Don't settle for Oculus. Where's the Fred is right emote? <laughs> There's the big brain emote. Will that do? So anyway, uh, they put it on the animatronic and... Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, he's all alone in a big empty space. Except he's not. Ah, uh, and now now they get to experience the good old days. Look at that. Yay! They get to remember when life wasn't shit. <laughs> get the like don't get it. Like 
don't don't even yeah like they're gonna just load you up with all of their shit do not let the price fool you this just reads super sad yeah it's <laughs> don't just don't do it oh emmy kasama just cheered 40 bits and i totally missed what they said Oh, how about PSVR? That would obviously be better. Yeah, I, I've heard that people are really happy with their PSVR. Sab maybe open my mouth, stick out my tongue, point, and make gagging noises. Just know that Facebook will fuck with you. When you get a quest, they already have been fucking with Oculus users for a long time. On top of that, like. Just adding on to all of it, they're very unhealthy for the VR space because they keep, um, whenever they hire up a studio and they release a game, it's only for the, for their Oculus. They're trying, the reason that they are pricing their headsets so low is because they're trying to muscle everyone out of the competition. It's just a tactic. Like they're trying to they're trying to affect a monopoly. And yeah, if you lose your Facebook account, you can't use your headset. Uh-oh, you lose everything. <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a goddamn nightmare. Don't they own Beat Saber? Do they? I wasn't under it. Like unless that changed, they don't. Did that change when I wasn't looking? Russ on an old grill just sub. Thank you very much. And, of course, bean button. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can't wait for your grandma to walk into MetaQuest and see three furries flirting. Oh, don't you know? that? That's why... Um, that is why all these um like all these other spaces are coming up because VR chat is too queer. <laughs> that that literally is the problem. It is it is a space for a lot of uh queer people and that is very uncomfortable for a lot of mainstream um like uh people like just mainstream producers. That's what I'm trying to say. So they're, they're, they will actively be trying to suppress that sort of presence. Just because. Like, it's... And, and like, no one's going to explicit... Like, nobody in that sphere, nobody who is producing for that sphere is going to explicitly say that. But that is a significant reason why you are seeing things like meta. It's because places like VRChat and uh, Neos are just too queer. And 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 I and I don't mean that in like the the derogatory sense. I mean that in like there, um, there are a lot of queer people on those platforms. It's because of the sex. I mean, that's how a lot of people sort of equate the the queer community. It's. It, that 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 is an entire conversation um but you don't have to like you don't have to engage with that part of vr chat if you don't want to and yet right i mean there there are fetish groups on facebook right also lizzie uh bored lizzie 40 wax has been subbed for three months now thank you so much and hey <laughs> okay we are going to take a little break, everyone. I encourage you, stand up, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, get yourself a sippy, look after yourself, and I'll see you all in just a few minutes. The bean button was silent because I had act I had muted um, the speakers for the ad. So we're gonna just mash the bean button. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. It looks like you get to visit. It looks like you get. It looks like you. It looks like you get. It looks like you. 
It looks like you get. Oh, bungle pause. Oh dear. Uh, before before we leave, bungle pause has just gifted five subs. Oh dear. Thank you so much. And and kicked off a, a hype train right as we're going on break. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for gifting five subs, and of course, to all of you. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> all right. Um, enjoy the chillest, quietest hype train that you ever have experienced.
Wait, what the fuck? What happened? I was up for like a couple of minutes. And we hit level 5 on the hype train. You realize I was joking, right? You people are crazy. What what is hold on. What is what is this? Okay. Star Shard cheered 100 bits. WG Impact cheered 100 bits. Different Dan cheered 100 bits. Pate B gifted a sub to Queen of Waffles. Quail 012 cheered 100. Viserel gifted five subs to just, you know, people. <laughs> and so did Skelecorgi. And then after gifting five subs to everyone, Skelecorgi gifted a specific sub to Twink Furry, and then resubbed themselves for two months, saying Twitch is glitching, let me type a second sub alert for some reason. Anyway, thanks for the stream. I don't see the first one. I'm gonna try to scroll up and find it. Jesus Christ, people. Herbs twerk. Herbs herbs twerk. Herbs twerk. Gifted five subs to just, you know, people as well. Then Plico Plico cheered 300 bits. And then Skelecorgi gifted another sub <laughs> to Commandant Cobald. And now Comrade Buns has subbed. What are you all doing? Hold on a second. I Someone suggested this. I have an idea. Can I copy? Okay. I have an idea. I'm just going to take care of all of this at once. And I I don't know how this is going to go, so bear with me. Someone suggested that I just have a bunch of bonus bean buttons all at once. So, um, that's what we're going to try. Here we go. It looks like it looks like this 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 it looks it works. <laughs> what happens if I press all of them at once? It looks like you get oh God. to visit the bonus beam room. Oh god, it was just loud. Uh, did it- wait a minute, what- it, what- wait, what- why was it launching OBS again? What happened? Hold on, did it- did I accidentally press another- did I, like, short something out? What happened? We're okay. Uh, we're okay. I have a button that just launches everything. I think I accidentally hit the launch everything button. Oh, this is turning into a nightmare very quickly. But no, that that is good. When this happens... Oh, good. A different Dan just gifted a sub to Gamiac. Specifically Gamiac. Oh, thank... Thank you, everyone. So, what happened was I tried to press all of the bean buttons at once, and it kind of lagged it out and played them all at once. Uh, I haven't finished my tea, so I'm just gonna hang out and sip my tea for a little bit and chat with all of you. How does that sound? Yeah, professional streamer. Precisely. I mean, I guess semi-pro at this point, right? Oh. Hmm. Teamsty. Uh, did I get partnered? Not yet. I did submit a partner application, but that can take up to two weeks. So, you know, we're just waiting now. Um, hopefully I'll get that little check mark eventually. That would be nice. I think I'm streaming enough. <laughs> you all are certainly being generous enough to make them look twice. Oh, salted Caracal Muda chucking a penny at me. Deteron Golas with 500 bits as well. Thank you for giving me so many months and years of good cheer. If my work gives you good cheer, you might want to see a psychologist. 
<laughs> no, but really, thank you. Have you ever drank tea before, Frank? Hmm. Hmm. I fucking wonder. <laughs> Durf. Dref? Wait a minute. No, my name backwards is Durf. Not Dref. This is like, this is a new persona now. We have Fred, Durf, and Dref. What kind of tea is in the cup? I am drinking, and this is kind of an interesting story. I'm drinking a ripe poor tea. It's, uh, so it's, it's a, a kind of fermented tea. The funny thing is, these sorts of fermented teas change flavor over time. I remember I I tasted it a while ago and was like, wow, this tastes like dirt. So I just kind of put it at the bottom of my <laughs> of my tea drawer. And I decided, you know, after a year or two, I don't even remember when I got it. Um, I decided to pull it out again and I'll be damned. It's good now. <laughs> so that actually is a thing you can do with Pu'er. It, it's designed to be aged. So, bad tea can become good tea. Hmm. Um, Pu'er is a very earthy sort of flavor. Personally, if you're going to try a ripe Pu'er, so a, a, a also known as show Pu'er, I would highly recommend... You know what? I'll just link it in chat. Let me find it. Denong tea. I don't even remember where they're based. Hopefully they have huh, based. Hopefully they still have the tea, the specific tea that I love. Ooh, they have a new wild ripe. I should try that. Do they still have it? I remember I got it actually because it was relatively cheap. I think they're out. Ooh, they have a 2015 uh, wild ripe harvest. Ooh, interesting. Sorry, I'm kind of getting lost looking at tea. Oh, they, they, there it is, there it is. Uh, the Yule. I would highly recommend this to try out. Uh, oh dear, um, it's just a pre-order. Wait, pre-order? Oh, for the 2020. I see. Yeah, that's good. I would, um, the one that I'm having right now that is aged really well is this one. I tried it once. Uh, it tasted like dirt, put it away, took it out after a year or two, and actually it's good now because that's how poor just works. Just go to the Asian market New Year for your teas. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's 155 bucks if you're getting like a 350 gram cake. That is a lot of fucking tea. You do, <laughs> you do not need, okay. If you click the link and it tells you like hundreds of dollars, just, you don't have to get that much. Get 100 grams and you will be fine. <laughs> That is, that, so that is like 150 bucks for like 357 grams, like a big cake. You do not need that much usually. Just get 100 grams. It'll be fine. <laughs> so uh, often with these puerities, people will actually hold on to it for years and years, specifically for resale. What if you take a bite from a tea cake? I mean, it'd be a very expensive bite. <laughs> Graham dad. Hmm. <laughs> yum yum. Did I thank Yo-Yo Guberry for the hundred bits and then just flicking pennies at my face? Imagine scalping tea. It's not scalping tea. It's It actually is like an investment for some people because there is a whole tea community. And tea is a commodity, especially these aging teas. 
they're a commodity that is almost guaranteed to net you a profit. So there's like, I, I'm not into it. I just like the tasty leaf juice. How many tea bags is a 350 cake of tea? Oh God. Uh, hmm. The tea bag usually has like, what? One gram? Two? Not very much. So that's like 357 bags of tea that is actually good. <laughs> Except you're going to be using, uh, when you infuse it, you're going to be using more than that. Like, I use six and a half grams uh, for this one. But, I mean, this this tea is going to last me all day. I steep the same leaves over and over and over and over again. It is a lot of tea. How much is that in Lipton tea bags? Well, Lipton tea bags are effectively zero, because why the fuck are you drinking Lipton? <laughs> I, I swear, one of the biggest scams that has ever occurred in America is Lipton convinced the United States that their tea is what tea is supposed to taste like. Almost gifted a kilo tea cake. What the shit? That is so much tea. Couple of poor cakes that are over 50 years old. Yeah, you can find some really, really old cakes of tea that are still around. It's really impressive. <laughs> Tricked Fred into bringing back tea stream. I was kind of considering doing tea streams again, though I'm going to need another uh, camera. I'm going to do that. Actually, I wonder if I could. I wonder if I could get my phone camera to work. Hmm. I'd have to look into that. Miss tea streams? We'll do them again. They'll happen again. I, I want to make sure that I can actually get Lauren working, kind of like Chris has done in the past, when they are, like, doing something with their real hands, and then they also have uh, Chester on the screen. Lipton is only accept acceptable for making sweet tea for Southerners you dislike but have to be polite to. <laughs> there are some people who just refuse to drink anything other than Lipton. It's actually impressive how people were conned into thinking that Lipton is good. Hmm. How do tea streams work? I just have a camera on my tea set and I make tea. I did that for a while. How long is this tea segment flicking a penny for every time you say tea is too difficult? Is that what you were doing? Just flicking a, a bit at me every time I said the word tea. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we need to get back to the meat. Uh, we just looked at the quest ad um, and I'm depressed. Great. I'm depressed now. We are going to look at the cosmology of sarcasm now. You all ready? Do we need to bring down the music? No. Music's good, right? Yeah, it's a little loud. Wait, you have a cherry on top of that quest ad. It's bad. Holy shite. Hugby's got mad at the news. I believe it. Wait, like, is there, like, video of Hugby's getting mad at this? Because I'm curious now. I know that these streams kind of meander sometimes. Uh, sometimes. Especially when we're just reading something fun. Um, th this is one of those days where I needed something chill. And so I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll look at meat. We'll look at meat. Resident Evil 4 was censored? How? YouTube community or Twitter. It was YouTube. Huh. Oh, interesting. Okay. Weird. Censoring an old GameCube game. 
Okay. Well, this isn't censored. <laughs> the observable universe is one among a finite or infinite number of possible universes contained within the meta-universe. Each universe can in turn be divided into a finite or infinite number of iterations. The structure of the meta-universe, the natural laws which allow for the manifestation of universes, is eternal without beginning or end. Universes, on the other hand, are created and eventually destroyed. Beyond this, Sarkic cosmology is fairly simple by virtue of the indifference of its adherents. Existence is regarded as an entirely brute fact, corruptible, discordant, and devoid of purpose. The Old God, Yaldabaoth, uh, also known as Vi Va 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 Vajjusma, Vajjusma. The old god, god-eater, devourer, his, her, undulating vastness, the great winnower, the womb of chaos, and various other epithets, is regarded in Sarkicism as the principal power in the universe. Neo-Sarkites appear to admire this entity, but Proto-Sarkites, and all discovered scripture thus far, describe it as the true enemy of all people. Translated fragments of the Val uh, Valkzaram suggest that Eon had somehow usurped control of this cosmic entity, wearing the flesh of the old god as a sort of armor and crafting from its body a kingdom. This is contradicted by recently discovered scripture which, su which suggests that Eon merely cast down the living gods of the Deva, weaker avatars of the Archons, the children or servants of Yalda Yaldabaoth. The continued mortality of humanity and the absence of paradise ultimately imply that, were Eon real, that he had failed to achieve his goals. As with all things related to Sarcasism, it is difficult to discern reality from myth, most especially when myth contradicts. Proto-Sarkites view this entity with fear and disgust disgust, regarding it as both the creator and destroyer of all life and the progenitor of the gods. As more sects are discovered, the diversity of interpretation grows readily apparent. Quote, the wound cut from the flesh of totality, deep it severed the line of future and past. Drawn to its ancient fester, gods swarmed as flies to a corpse. We waited within bloodless veins, faithful to that which we could not know unable to imagine that we might become their greater. Here we slept until our souls became flesh. Stone Alku Yaldabaoth is portrayed as both destroyer and incidental creator, feeding upon gods, worlds, and stars while exhaling life into the cosmos, which will evolve, grow, and eventually be harvested again. Life is thus a natural byproduct of the old god's existence, unguided by intelligence and spreading through a process not entirely dissim dissimilar from panspermia. I'm guessing this is just an explanation of panspermia, yeah. Sarkites believe this entity has turned the multiverse into a- Nobody tell Mike about the concept of panspermia, he's just- He will not shut up about it. If he doesn't already know about it. <laughs> he does, we don't need that. We don't need more. Sarkites believe this entity has turned the multiverse into an altar with our existence and the existence of all biological life forms being brought into reality for the singular purpose of sacrifice. Blind and driven solely by instinct, so uh, I, I feel like um, Yaldabaoth is a direct, it is directly inspired by Azathoth. Uh, for those who don't know, in the Cthulhu mythos, uh, Azathoth is the idiot god who, uh, it, and we all exist as, um, as Azathoth's dream. And if Azathoth ever to wake up, ever were to wake up, then we all would basically disappear because, you know, we wouldn't be dreamed anymore. Azathoth, Thoth, Fith, Th. Too many THs. Uh, he is kept asleep by a number of flautists surrounding him, playing enchanting music. Anyway, this is very clearly inspired by Azathoth. Do people believe this stuff? No. <laughs> no, this is all fiction. I, I, I mean, if there is anyone who actually believes 
that you know Lovecraft's mythology is real, then they're they're probably pretty smelly and wear a little bit too maybe a little bit too much leather and um, dye their hair a bit too much. Like they go a little hard on the uh, on the bleach during the process. I'll put it that way, right? <laughs> they're also a little bit greasy. You know the kind of person I'm talking about. Blind and driven solely by instinct, Yaldabaoth is depicted as being accompanied by otherworldly entities known as Archons or Voltas among certain proto-Sarkic cults. These beings are described by Sarkic texts as faceless manifestations of primordial chaos, their true forms inconceivable to the human mind. Gnostic and Mechanite scripture would mention the Archons as well, describing them as terrible and rapacious angels. Quote, the swineherd prostrated himself before the sorcerer king and asked, Great sorcerer king and Ozermok, heart of man and light of lights, I speak for the folk of the cold marsh. We fear the red lanterns that dance without harmony, our spirit guides warn of ill omens. And Eon did assure the man, I have gazed upon the faceless ones, servitors of his undulating vastness. Their chief is blind, castrated by our words and will. He sings songs of anarchy, but they will not come again. These terrible spirits do not deserve our love. Render unto them no sacrifice until the stars have aligned. Chaos is an ancient Greek belief, right? Um, Chaos actually shows up in uh, Hades, the game. Good game. Love that game. The six, or actually a while ago for the, um, I'm sure most people missed it, but Mike and I did a stream where basically he chose all of my boons for me and tried to fuck me over. <laughs> the six ordeals of Eon refers to six challenges issued to Eon by the Archons. Through enduring their trials, Eon is said to have mastered the rituals and practices ubiquitous to Sarcasism, breaking free from the bondage of mortal limitations. Further information about Eon's relationship with Yaldabaoth and his Archons, as well as the nature of the ordeals, remains unknown. Although relevant, stones are believed to be recorded within the Eluvan class, a known but unrecovered Sarkic grimoire. Hmm. The stream where I got a lifetime supply of low job. No, um, that actually happened uh, privately. I was playing Hades for the first time with uh, Vex and Mike watching. And on my... It wasn't my first playthrough, but I think I beat... Um, I beat Asterius and, oh my god, I'm forgetting. It's been a while since I played Hades. It's um, Asterius and someone in chat helped me out. That, that, those two together. Um, I beat them on my first, like, I, I, I entered the room specifically. Like, I, I beat Asphodel, then I made my way all the way through, um, all the way through Asterius and Theseus. Thank you. It's Theseus. I made it through and I entered, you know, I, I was kind of low on health, um, but Mike said, Fred, if you beat Asterius and Theseus on your first try, I will give you a lifetime supply of blowjobs. And I fucking did it. I beat Asterius and Theseus on my first try. <laughs> and... It was in that moment that, um, that I felt like a true god gamer. Oh, okay. Anyway, how the fuck? It was close. It was very close, to be fair. Yeah, how to motivate a man. Look, Mike gives really good sloppy toppy. Oh, whoops, Jackie Foxbutt. I got a little bit um, into reading. I hope you're still around. Um, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Yog Sothoth. <laughs> well, uh, Yog Sothoth, your... Um, uh, please, please don't hear this, but I am obligated to. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. All right. Hades-themed blowjobs stop. 
Some Sarkic cults hold that the Archons, along with the Aldebaoth, do not originate from our universe, let alone the multiverse. These cults believe that these entities be begin in the void, and that their colossal physical bodies are vessels for these profane spirits. Because their consciousnesses, consciousness is tethered to the void, they know only hunger and will consume all things in their desire to feel whole, spreading like a cancer across the multiverse. The Archons are frequently referenced as having some relationship to the stars and the growing darkness that exists between them, but little else is known about this connection. Sarkic art and iconography typically depicts Archons as red or black and vaguely cephalo cephalopodic. Okay, that was it. Guys, it's the Reapers. <laughs> the Reaper threat. Look at it. Hey, sto uh, bleh, Stoner Molder. Thank you very much for subbing. And to you as well. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. <laughs> it doesn't get old. I can't believe that line exactly it actually exists in a Harry Potter game. And to his flock, Eon thus spoke. I have stepped beyond the flow of dreams, stood before the old ones within their own desolate domain. I have endured their intolerable force across countless eons. I have seen the infinite dead worlds, murdered death herself. I have read the entrails of our creator, beheld eternity unfurled. Know that our paradise draws near, and with our own flesh shall we birth it. Amen. <laughs> so we get some sick ass history. Let's go, baby. I need a sippy. Pros so good you wouldn't think it was SCP. No, I'm, te I'm, I'm teasing. There's some good pros in SCP. Most information regarding Sarkic history and mythology is sourced to the Bodfell Codex. Recovered from SCP-2480, the Codex includes a partial translation of the Vol Volkzaron and related marginalia. Along with archaeological evidence, the Foundation has been able to establish the history of Sarkicism. As essential as the Codex has been, large gaps remain in the timeline, and much of the following is entirely speculative and subject to change. Mechanized stream when it'll happen. Um, I like the idea of doing streams where I just look at bits of SCP lore. Like, uh, because I, th I think a lot of people read the SCPs, but they don't know some of the background behind some of them, like the, the different canons. Because you have sarcasm, we'll have to look at the Church of the Broken God at some point just to balance things out. Um, I would love to look at, um... Uh, what was it? The the library. I'd love to look at uh what what are they? The uh, the group that sells SCPs. Marshall Carter and Dark. <laughs> Holy shit, SCP-173, but if you blink, he blows you. Yeah, I only lasted. The Wanderer's Library, yeah. I know that there are a lot of people who are really into um the Wanderer's Library as its own canon, right? Dr. Wondertainment? Yeah. Um, actually, in the campaign that I did, Dr. Wondertainment featured very prominently. But yeah. History. Haha. Most information regarding Sarkic history and mythology is sourced to the... Oh yeah, we already read that. Ha 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 ha. Early history. Sarkic weapons, armor, and trinkets have been discovered among Minoan ruins on the island of Sant Santorini. Santorini, formerly Thera, possibly placing their origins to at least before the eruption event which triggered the complete collapse of, of the Minoan civilization around 1500 BCE. 
Not enough to suggest an invasion and occupation. More likely, the items arrived via Minoan merchants and Central Asian trade routes. It is presently believed that Sarcasism itself did not reach the Mediterranean until approximately 1200 BCE, theoretically related to the Bronze Age collapse. D Davite tablets dated to approximately 1800 BCE referred to a slave rebellion in the northernmost province led by a charismatic uh, heresiarch and half-blood. Scrolls discovered which contain phrases and terms archetypical to Sarkic cults, including references to a Grand Carcist Eon. These findings suggest that Sarkicism has existed for nearly 4,000 years. All evidence linguistically and archaeologically, points to Western Siberia as Sarkicism's place of origin. Only somewhere as depressing as Siberia could, <laughs> could possibly birth uh, could possibly birth Sarkicism. And actually, when we look at Proto-Sarkicism, uh, now, now more people are telling me how to, how to pronounce Ion or Eon. Th that's what we're trying to figure out. Is it Eon or Ion? And the, the answer that we came to is who gives a shit? Eon, if still alive, if having ever existed at all, likely represents a high-level high reality bender. And then th this is... I, I feel like reality benders are sort of cheating in the SCP universe, right? It's like, oh, they believe that this is the way things were, and then it became this way, tee hee hee. Little is known about the Grand Carcist Sorcerer King of Aditum, a city of unnumbered, unspeakable crimes, according to the ancient Mechanites. Considered the capital of Sarcasism, it remains unknown if the location con continues to exist in some manner. Fred, Fred should just watch Fesh Pints on stream. Would I get copyright claimed if I watched Fesh Pints of Blair? Like, does anyone know? Would I get in trouble? Cause that uh, maybe yeah. Uh... Reality bending is explained in what way? I know that like there are some people that just have the ability. In fact, it featured pro reality benders also featured prominently in um, in my tabletop campaign. Uh, da, da, da. Little is known about the Grand, Grand Carcis, Sorcerer King of Aditum, with all information being in the form of deification or demonization, and lacking in factual reliability. The Volxeron refers to Eon as having been born to a Devi Devite mother and sired by a concubinous father, implying that males born of such unions were destined for slavery. The exact nature of Eon's bondage is unknown, but he's su his supposed intellect suggests that he was not used for combat or manual labor, perhaps serving under an alchemist or priestess. Artistic depictions of Eon vary, ranging from masculine to androgynous, from young to old, and from human to forms otherworldly. He is most often characterized as wearing red, white, and black robes and bearing his iconic staff, whilst the nude variants usually depict his body as impaled by various spears or stakes or carrying his own decapitated head, signifying his immunity to death. Yeah, man, this dude gives crazy head! Associated symbols include spirals, shattered chains, drops of blood, sickles, and the Ouroboros. It remains unknown which came first, Eon's chicken or Eon's egg, his doctrine or his revolution. If these events are grounded in reality, it is possible that the religion developed in coincidence with his slave revolt and as a way to codify their methods of anomalous warfare. I like... What? what um, a lot... There, there are whole schools of um, Japanese martial arts that are built around using farming tools, tools as weapons, like Kama. Like, the, the comma, the little sickles, those are farming equipment. As well as tonfa, which I believe were used to turn, um, like, grain, uh, grain wheels. And then Grand Carcist Eon was just like, nah, fuck that meat. The kunai? Wait, how is the kunai a, farming, a piece of farming equipment? What do you, Really? I'm dubious, because it's just a tiny knife. 
Is it just because it's a little knife? And yes, I know. Kunai with chain. Oh, it's for digging. Harvesting fruit. Okay, like a trowel. Interesting. Oh. I learned today. Okay. Yeah, thanks, chat. Uh, to do. In his mission, Eon was aided by four individuals known as the Clavagar. Figures of reverence and supposed disciples of Eon, they are the saints of sarcasism. Clavagar Nadox. Access granted. Associated with intelligence, wisdom, perception, and mysteries. Epithets include the tongueless speaker, lord of mysteries, the all-seeing, and the anticipation of Eon. Once a sage in the southernmost region of Davite influence, he preached a philosophy of peace and equality, building a following among the impoverished. Agitating the Deva, he was captured and publicly tortured, the poor he had tried to help now hurling stones upon him. Before a crowd of hundreds, drunk and atrocious in their stupidity, a Deva priestess cut off his tongue, sewed shut his mouth, and had him emasculated. Rather than having Nadox executed, they instead had him marked, a symbol placed upon the forehead. Impossible to remove, it designated him as a sufferer, one who the people were required by the Deva's decree to forever torment but never kill. So this is kind of a Cain sort of situation. Not SCP Cain. That's... I don't know. I, I always thought that that SCP was kind of cringy. Nadox wandered the land as a pariah, denied refuge and safe passage, struck with rocks and slashed with knives. Kunai. All... Uh, kunai. Slashed with glorious Nippon steel, all by the people he had hoped to save. It is written that he beheld, while suffering a fever dream, a messianic entity, one that could rescue him and humanity from an existence of suffering and tears. Is it Abel? No, Abel was like the good brother, right? It is written, only Link <laughs> can defeat Ganon. Abel was the violent one, excuse me. I got it backward. GG. Wait, Cain killed Abel. Yeah. Abel is the edgy one in the SCP verse. So they got it. Oh, whatever. You know what? Yeah, I I, I remember. I specifically remember SCP switching it, but I still couldn't remember which was which. It is written that he beheld. It is written. Nadox would travel north in search of this savior to guide Eon toward his destiny. Nadox is typically depicted in red and gold attire, his head, sometimes hands, completely bandaged or caged by a punitive mask, representing his status as a sufferer, and bearing multiple arms with eyes in the palms of his hands. His symbols include eyes, hands, scrolls, teardrops, and lotus flowers. I actually have some lotus-flavored tea. Not a fan. I don't know, it, it kind of tastes like medicine. And Eon held his six fingers aloft, and upon their spears did the soldiers impale themselves. For you, they cried, before the blood drowned their tongues. And Eon said, Now do you see? And Nadox wept, as more did skewer themselves in Eon's name, for he had seen and now knew the truth of his words. Metal. Clavagar Lovatar. Like, the thing is, these people actually don't really sound like douches. They sound like people who have just... Like, they sound like decent people, right? I understand that the SCP Foundation is supposed to be like, or, um, sorry, uh, sarcasm and sarc, um, sarcasists, sar sarcasists are supposed to be like really weird and gross and evil, and it seems like they are, but all this is, I don't know, all the Clavagars seem rad, Eon seems rad. Not everyone are evil, yeah. I mean, like, a, a lot of the 
uh, proto Sarkis seem pretty chill. Associated with sex, love, eroticism, pleasure, motherhood, disease, and unrestrained reproduction, breeding, cancers, growth, etc. So this is Lovatar. Epithets include the one whom Ion, e, uh, the Eon most desired, the high blood redeemer, and the mother, on rare occasions brood or hive mother. A priestess, as well as the daughter of a Deva matriarch, she was initially in opposition to Eon, whose revolution threatened her way of life. It is written that her hatred for Eon eventually became a sort of infatuation. Men riding women, am I right? Am I right? Got no, okay. Unable to remove him from her mind, she sought to capture and bind him as her consort. In her quest to make him hers, Lobatar sent wave after wave of slave hunters, but none returned. In time, it would be Eon who came to her by his own accord. It is written that Eon visited her in the night, bypassing her guards and appearing within her bedchamber. Instead of attacking, he sat upon the edge of the bed and played with her little tozy wozies no, I'm, I'm kidding. and quietly spoke to her. What was said is unknown, but resulted in Lovatar and Eon forming a union over a period of twelve days. On the twelfth day, the two left her palace behind, never to return. It is written that the words were meant for Lovatar alone, and thus never recorded. Lovatar is typically depicted as beautiful, voluptuous, often to unrealistic extremes, and almost always in the nude, save for golden ornaments including headdresses, necklace and necklaces, and bangles. She is often stylized as having claw-like fingers and toes, as well as a pair of horny, which may or may not be part of her headdress. Her symbols include an insect queen, traditionally bee or ant, a punctured heart, a blooming rose, and a broken scepter. Oh, I was playing um I was playing inscription the other day, and I've come to the conclusion I really don't like ants unless you get a really, really overpowered ant card. Because there are ways to to like make ants really powerful. Specifically, I had an ant queen that had fecundity and um what is it? Uh brood? Uh, the one, it, it, it's the one that gives you a, a rabbit. So basically, like, you get, you get a free ant, you get another ant queen, and then you get a rabbit with which to play your worker ant. Sorry, we're talking about inscription. It's my brain rot. I, I have brain rot. Ripper Tear is on their third month. Thank you so much. Been here for a while, but never thought to ask. Is the bonus bean room related to beaning a horse? No, it has nothing to do with that. You know what? I'll show you uh, what precisely it refers to. The it, It's inexplicable because I've never played this game. I just thought that this was so funny that I referenced it once on stream and it became a running gag. Here we go. The head this week. Oh, it appears that Gryffindor is in the lead. Harry, it looks like you get to visit the bonus beam room. <laughs> this looks like shit. <laughs> It looks like absolute shit. I think that I think that you control Harry with tank controls. Look, they look like tank controls. This is awful. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. I really need to play this game at some point. But yeah, um Congratulations. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. There's your welcome. Thank you very much for the sub. So anyway, sarcasm. <laughs> uh, do do do. She's often stylized as happy. So insect queen. Uh, her symbols include an insect queen, t traditionally bee or ant, a punctured heart, a blooming rose, and a broken scepter. 
Quote, Beneath the black moon, her devotion took the form of a stone knife like those of the reindeer folk of Adium. Penetrated, amber blood, colored by ancient sins, poured from the wound, her tears like the warm rain of distant summers. Beneath the poison moon, the amber flowed no more, and the snow she painted red. <laughs> For Eon, who drank deep the fermented honey of Lovatar's kiss, Eon surrendered upon her pale breasts a, sh a shared respite in ecstasy. Still, Eon hungered, and from Lovatar's dark lips flowed words, There is pleasure in serving. Smiling, he fell to his knees, knowing the drunk joy of milk and sweet fermented honey and tea leaves. Hey, Oblivion, thank you. Thank you for continuing your sub. And for some reason, that doesn't show up in my activity feed. The activity feed seems really unreliable. So if, if anyone was like continuing their sub or things like that, I'm so sorry if I missed it. And then they did the sexy in the Bible way. Clavigar Orok, a figure of reverence and supposed disciple of Ion. Eon, A.S. I followed. <laughs> A figure, hey, that's that's Shia, isn't it? Yeah, that that's Shia Bun. Oh my God, could you imagine if I ended up streaming with Shia or Buff Pop one day? That would be terrifying. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're so energetic, and I'm just so. Oof. I'm quieter, perhaps. You know, we have a couple more Karsas to get to, but it is it is about time for a sippy break so everyone that's gonna be no i i was saying wouldn't it be funny i haven't <laughs> i haven't talked with them that would be that would be a fascinating stream though weirder things have happened i've streamed with melody project melody after like i got invited into a call by mary and then we ended up hitting it off, and I and like I just joined her stream to show my latest down the rabbit hole. That 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 was one of the weirdest things I've done. A Fred and Buff stream would be would be bizarre. Yeah, yeah, it would. I'd be for it. I'd be f I'd be completely for it. It would be it would be a fascinating experiment. Okay, it is now sippy time. So everyone, I encourage you get up, stretch your legs, stretch your arms. Get yourself a sippy, and I'll see you all in about five or ten minutes. Voice uh, voice crack. Uh, see you in a minute.
Hello everyone. I'm back with my own cup of tea. I I mentioned this before, but I tend to use the same leaves all day unless it's green tea. It's really nice. I I basically uh, I drink a lot of ripe puer when I go on a kick. I drink a lot of oolong white teas. White teas will just easily like i feel like i'm wasting some of my white tea every time because white teas just tend especially like really nice ones um tend to last just over and like forever you can see them over and over and over again um and especially with white tea you can just keep increasing the temperature and getting more and more flavor out of it mix up two authors wow uh i'm gonna have to ask you to leave and uh ban yourself from chat forever <laughs> No, white tea, I think, actually has the most longevity out of any kind of tea. Oh, Marek says. Thank you for subbing. Been subbed for five months. Back when I've been back when I was doing primarily just tea streams. Thank you so much. And of course. It looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. What did everyone get to drink today? I'm curious. I noticed. We had a couple of people. We had, I saw a coffee and uh, and a and a cookie being represented from the oven. Some oolong tea, water, butterfly butterfly pea flower tea. Nice. The ha having a cup of blue. <laughs> Iced tea, chai tea, water, mint, and black tea mix. Nice. Root beer, cheese street, no, tea streams. <laughs> Jesus. Earl Grey. I learned a little bit ago that Lady Grey is a copywritten term. You put the lemon in and it turns purple. Yeah, I've heard that. I couldn't ever quite get it to work myself. I think I just wasn't adding enough lemon. Sencha with cum. <laughs> Savory. <laughs> Standard way, way too sweet coffee. Watch a cheese stream? Oh my god, I remember, um, there was a, like, in the city there was a cheese bar. And not like a bar made of cheese, I mean like a bar that served really, really good cheese. Like, like the beef and dairy network. Like, you know, they, they knew their stuff about cheese. It was like the beef and dairy network, except for real. Charcuterie. Yeah, that'd be kind of cute. Do I ever partake and enjoy alcohol? Only on rare occasion. Very rare occasion. Um, I used to enjoy hard alcohol. But, I don't know. Like that... That was a, years ago. Um, I kind of, I don't know. I just kind of lost interest in it. I don't like it as much. Um, Austrian wine. And look, I know it's a meme because I made the Austrian wine poisoning video, but Austrian wine is so good. Um, and beer. That some places in America make really, really good beer. I was amazed, by the way. Okay. So you know how in America, when, if you're going to pay like a buck for a beer, right? What are you going to get? You're going to get a beer with like less than 1% alcohol. I went to Austria and I learned you can get, for about the same amount of money, you can get a Puntigammer, which is a brand. It's a very, very popular brand in Austria that has over 5% alcohol. Like, that's the cheap stuff for them. That's their cheap beer. That's their cheap beer. It's inc it's crazy. And it, it the crazy thing, it actually isn't bad. Don't fuck around with that beer. Yeah, Puntigammer is, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's that kind of beer where they're advertising on every, you know, storefront. Ever tried Yerba Mate? Eh, I, I had mate a long time ago, but that was from uh, Tivana. 
I, Tivana was kind of my introduction to T, and, I'm, and then I started learning more about it. Then I, then I went to the uh, tea convention and actually found, like, really, really good tea. You can get really good tea for way cheaper. Um, Tivana is overpriced to hell. That's the, like, the thing is, well, first of all, Tivana, and I think I told this story before, um, Tivana is overpriced, but they also are extremely aggressive. They, um, I went on a date with a, with a girl who talked about, um, so she used to work for a, uh, a tea retailer and, um, but they also made their own blends. And people from Tivana would come in and try to convince this person to sell the, um, the recipe for making this tea blend. And when, when she refused, they went to the girl that I was dating. Uh, well, date. I went on a date with her. And she said, um, like, and they asked her, it's like, hey, we'll give you money to slide us the recipe. So Tivana is actively, like, <laughs> that's how I learned that Tivana is actively, like, going under the table trying to steal people's, um, it's like, recipes for tea. She ruined the date. No. <laughs> no, she was cool. This was a while ago, though. Long time ago. Uh, so wait, so Saint X File is saying the same thing. You had the same thing happen? That's actually crazy. Yeah, th this that's like mob tactics, right? <laughs> that's brutal. Isn't it just leaves? Uh, blends. Uh, certain blends are um, are in high demand. Literally, we had a T-Rep get obliterated by our store owner slash manager. They tried to hit up the girl who trained me. Wow. That face when no big T, T, goth girlfriend. Actually, uh, she was a goth. You were kind of... When was this? This was like... Was I just out of college? I think I was just out of college. Anyway. Yada, 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 yada. <laughs> hmm. But no. Um, I, I'm not really into tea blends, personally. Our owner slash manager was a huge bitch in a great way. Okay, yeah. I know what you mean when you say that. The girl who trained me didn't like her, but was a real one and didn't take the bait. <laughs> Americans mimic the wine culture for the wine moms and more affordable wine comes in the market. They taste shit and like tea. They only know how wine's supposed to taste because that's like only wine they got. They got snobby about it. Mm. Um, am I out of college? What do you mean, am I out of college? <laughs> Wait a minute. How old do you think I am? Is it the voice? It's the voice, isn't it? Wait, uh, earnestly, how old did you think I was, boot plug? <laughs> Three. <laughs> Going to pick up some call. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. Hmm. Sippy. Hmm. I am a nine hundred year. I'm a nine hundred year old owl. Respect me. So we're talking about sarcasm. <laughs> oh dear, this is a meme stream. This is a terrible stream. I don't know why you guys are here. It's nothing but dumb shit and memes. We are looking at the last of the Karsis. Now we have Karsis Orok. Yes. Klavagar. Sorry, the Klavagars. Klavagar Orok. A figure of reverence and supposed disciple of Iom. I don't give a shit anymore. I'm calling him Iom. I keep doing it reflexively. 
associated with strength, war, violence, wilderness, hunting, and seemingly in contradiction, loyalty and revolt. Epithets include the Horned Beast, the Brute Lord, and the Pale Hunter. Described as being of unnatural physical strength, Auroch was the product of alchemical and thaumaturgical experimentation on slaves. Enthralled to matriarch Asvigosa, the ruling deva in the city of Jell, Auroch served as a per 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 personal guard and pit fighter, apparently considered the greatest gladiatorial combatant of his time. It is written that Ion, when taking the city of Jell, entered the palace of matriarch Asvigosa, presumably the highest authority in the city. He requested that the matriarch should leave and take with her a message to the Deva of Devas, lest she suffer retribution. Refusing his ultimatum, the matriarch ordered Orok to destroy him. To destroy him. It is written that Orok hesitated, his runes of bondage setting his starved soul aflame so that his body became spirit. Turning to his matriarch, he struck Asvigosa his fist imbued with the very power she had forced upon him and reduced her body to cinder and ash and heavenly starlight. What a way to go. Orok is typically depicted... What? This is a very loud song. Turn that down a bit. Orok is typically depicted as, as a large and muscular cycl cyclopic man wearing a loincloth. His symbols include a two-headed axe, a one-eyed skull, a no-eyed dog, a three-eyed... I'm, I'm losing it. A hunting spear, fractured bones, a closed fist, and a bull elephant. As Orok said to the Kytherans... Kythera is a location that appears in both Sarkic and Church of the Broken God scripture. Huh. The Valkzaron describes the conquest of Kythera and the conversion of its people. The Maxwellian Book of Horrors associates the location with the prophesied NK class end of the world end of, end of the world scenario. Do not <laughs> do not take sarcasm if you have cancer of the blood, cancer of the bone, are pregnant or nursing. Power is made from the pain of the fragile. Here weakness dies, here strength is born. I exert myself, a pale reflection of Ion's sacrifice of flesh in the intolerable force, and shed frailty's husk. I commune with my Akuloth core, my sacred metamorphosis complete. Oh, yeah, we're going to look at the organisms before we're done too. I don't think we're going to be able to get to everything because this is a very long article. But maybe we'll return. Clavagar Sarm, a figure of reverence and supposed disciple of Ion, associated with darkness, secrecy, deception, poison, assassination, and justice, or Jaka. Jaka translates as divide, separate, or even coal. It is employed in sarcasm as a concept of cosmic justice, separating the strong from the weak, the good from the evil, adherent from apostate, terminating those deemed enemy or unnecessary. Okay. <laughs> Jaka off. Stop. <laughs> I can tell which of you are from Mike's chat. You always reveal yourselves eventually. <laughs> Literally 1984. Epithets include the Whisperer, the Coiled Shadow, the Faceless One, and the Judgment of Ion. A young house servant, she quietly endured Davite abuse throughout her life. Having suffered long enough, she calmly murdered the entire household with poison, garrote, and dagger. In Kunai with chain. Captured, she would be imprisoned within the fortress city of Cursed. The first to fall so that he may rise, said to be the first kingdom to fall to Aditum, and having become symbolic of the inevitable defeat of those who stand in opposition to Sarcasism. Got him! Sarn was awaiting execution when first approached by Ion, who moved through the dungeon walls like the mist of summer's snow melt. I can, I can meet and unmeet to go through walls. <laughs> there, he said, the winds whispered of your actions. There is no evil in the judgment. You did not choose to be the vessel of our will. Many will die this day, but you are needed alive. 
The prophet's hand is described as having transformed into a wolfish maw, tearing apart the cell door with its teeth and liberating Sarm. Honing her skills, Sarn would eventually control a network of spies and assassins. A Davite tablet describes their efficacy in graphic detail, including men and women disemboweled in the streets and Davite infants strangled in their cradles by treacherous servants. Haha, <laughs> got him. Sarn is typically depicted as either a young girl dressed in rags or an entirely black half-human half-serpent being. Occasionally, both representations are shown with a chimeric entity acting as the girl's shadow. Her symbols include serpents, traditionally adders, a sacrificial dagger, a scale, and bound effigies. Quote, the heart is silenced before her dagger seam, a moment immortalized in a single strike. The judgment unavoidable, inescapable. Dismay, a death inconceivable to the arrogance of Deva. Triumph, a dagger in the darkness. With the blood of tyrants, our children sleep well. Mmm, yum, 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 tyrant blood. Yum, 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 yum. There is little available information about Sarcasism between 1600 and 1200 BCE, despite the period being considered the golden age of Sarkic civilization. It is during this period that Davite culture recedes, existing only as a small city-state in what is now Mongolia. It is theorized that the lack of archaeological evidence for its existence is due in part to many Sarkic structures being composed of living organic material. You know, I was going to make a joke that, like, it's because it, they just had meat huts, but that literally is what this is. They had meat huts. Oh, I actually wonder if the living room, that really early, the living room, is like some sort of Sarkic artifact. Sippy. Hmm. Hmm. War and the fall of the Deathless Empire. Yeah, SCP-02. Oh, oh, two. Sarkic civilization, having reached its zenith, began to spread into the co Caucasus, Anatolia, Balkans, and part of the Levant and Mesopotamia. Impressed by, or fearful of, their anomalous capabilities, several tribal groups began to fight under the banner of Adium and the Sarkic faith. These include Caskians, Proto-Thracians, Lycians, Illyrians, and many others. These semi-mythical, this semi-mythical, these state would come to refer to itself as the Kal Kalmaktama, or the Deathless. What is it about, like, Sar the people who wrote Sarcasm and Sarkic SCPs and just being way too into linguistics? Sausage cults, yeah. Meat sausages. Be beef sausage. Or the Deathless, the Hittite king, Supil... Supidoop, soup, soup, loop, soupy loops, the second, tried in vain to defeat the invaders contributing to the fall of the Hittite Empire. Got him. The Kal Kalmaktama Empire established a foothold in the Mediterranean, inv invading or slash colonizing the islands of Cyprus, Crete, and Gyrados. It is uncertain as to who struck first, but a coalition of kingdoms was formed in response to the Sarkic threat, resulting in a war around 1200 BCE. Archaeological findings such as mass graves, weapons, terrain damage, and primary source documents, such as scrolls recovered from Gyrados in the Aral Sea, reveal the extreme and anomalous nature of the war. No, you guys, the red Gyrados was just a Sarkic Gyrados. Technically, the Sarkics aren't meat cults. I mean... Technically, they get quite meaty, though. Like, just as a general rule. Their eloquence can be attributed to semen retention. Ah, oh, you're right. I feel like it's come up multiple times and people are just going to be the confused you know what hold on i want to see if i can find it let me take a look because i, I want to show everyone semen retention 
I know that the video was like two minutes long. Does anyone know what the channel was? Oh my god, there are just so many, like, videos about this. What happens after 60 days of semen retention? Uh, the power of semen retention. Uh, ancient wisdom and quotes on semen retention. There's so much. This is incredible. There's so many videos. There are a lot of shirtless dudes brain lytical top five dangerous parts of semen retention top five things i love about semen retention you know what i can't find it Wait, is this it? That's three step? No, I'm, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna. It's not worth it. I'm not gonna do it. it. Sounds like a rabbit. Yeah, I am kind of going down a rabbit hole right now. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're here for sarcasm. <laughs> I kind of want to just start watching videos on this and maybe, maybe that's a stream. Maybe, maybe that's just a stream that we do. Looking into semen retention. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come up with a with a clever stream title that doesn't get get me in trouble. I don't know. Then again, I am trying to get partner right now. Maybe we don't for a little while. <laughs> okay. Another time. I have enough other stuff. Foundation historians estimate a death toll ranging from 20 to 30 million, making it the fourth most devastating war in recorded history. Ever consider writing articles for the site? I don't know that I'm good enough. <laughs> According to recovered documents, the coalition formed in response to the Kalma Kalmaktama Empire include Egyptians, Mycenaean Greeks, Minoans, Canaanites, Assyrians, and the Mechanites. One of the reasons that I haven't written for uh, the foundation is I know that they are, they're very picky, but they also, um, don't they tend to just, pe uh, to only really publish articles from people who are active in the community, not just people coming in and, um, writing articles. Like they don't just want random people coming in. They want to sort of vet them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Most details of the war are unknown to the Foundation. It is suspected that the development of colossi, such as SCP-2406, as well as the heavy use of a substance resembling Greek fire that turned the tide of war against the Sarkites. When the war was over, the Kalmaktama Empire was assumed destroyed along with Sarkic civilization. In reality, Sarkicism would continue in secret, at both its homeland in the Urals and among the tribes that had fought under the banner of the Empire, such as among the Thracians and the Dacians and the Macians. And the, hold on, we have Trace, Dace, Unace, Nolace, Quadrace, Pentace. The damage to the region was great and many civilizations did not recover resulting in the collapse of various kingdoms, a crisis of refugees, the decline of art, literature, science, and technology, and the lingering disease and famine from Sarkic biological weapons, an event later known to historians as the Late Bronze, Bronze Age... I can't talk today! As the Late Bronze Age collapsed. That's not even a hard phrase. Shoelacians. <laughs> The fall of the once seemingly invincible Deathless Empire would result in a Sarkic diaspora, leading to the development of culturally distinct Sarkic cults throughout Eurasia. Due to a lack of reliable information, the Foundation can only speculate about Sarkic activities between um, circa 1100 BCE and 1300 CE. The Rise of Ayn Rand The majority of known Neo-Sarkic cults appear to descend from certain carp- Carpathian forests. Carpathian noble families influenced by the proto-Sarkic Solomonari. 
It is unknown whether the Sol Solomonari intentionally infiltrated Carpathian courts, or if they were just kind of doing their thing and the Carpathian courts rather liked their meat. Or if they instead sought... Um, or if they were instead sought out by the nobles themselves, ignoring or dismissing, possibly embracing, the rumors of devil worship and witchcraft surrounding the cult. Documents and artifacts retrieved some from SCP <laughs> suggest that some Solomonari served as court magicians, advising their lords and ladies on matters of alchemy, medicine, astrology, and the occult. In time, this would result in the development of Sarkic great houses, affluent families practicing their own interpretation of Sarkicism, placing the individual above the collective and applying it to their own self-serving needs. This new strain of Sarkicism would spread throughout Europe via marriage. Once these footholds were established, the great houses grew incestuous. <laughs> oh fuck, I was just now telling myself it would be neat if this YouTuber I really love listening to became a VTuber before clicking. <laughs> surprise. Fucking surprise. Hoot. Fucking hoot, bitch. <laughs> I... No, I, my streams often do not have a terribly strong visual component, and so I figured, you know what? After I found Kirpe, I'm like, yeah, let's screw it. Let, let's do it. And I just jumped in. I, I've been quite enjoying it. I feel like I, I feel like Lauren the Owl really adds uh, what this stream was lacking for a long time. Zombie FDR just subbed. There, there's so many new subs. Thank you so much. And of course, it looks like you get to visit the bonus bean room. Everyone, let let's give Zombie FDR some beans to help strengthen them, as they. <laughs> God, I can't believe that the beans actually became a thing and stayed a thing. The beak movements fitting your speech is weird and impressive. Kirpe did a really good job on the on the rig. I like I, I'm rather picky. I'm rather picky about uh, about rigs, and I really I really like this one. If I can write an article and have it stay up, you can do it. <laughs> Drop them the forum for feedback. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, like, that's the idea, right? You get feedback. The beans are beyond me. I don't know. Maybe I should write myself an SCP and then post it to the forum. Yeah. Fuck it. At some point, I may as well, right? I feel like I want to read more. Read more SCPs before I, uh, before I go in and make my own. I want to get it. I want to do it right. Proto sarcasm, aka the stinky meat boys. Individual orders vary by region, but can be divided into two primary types: proto sarcic and neo sarcic. These do not appear to represent divergent beliefs so much as environmental adaptations. Practitioners of proto sarcasm do not operate in the open unless a location is significantly isolated. Such sects display acute technophobia and eschew modernity, willing to go so far as to destroy or disable advanced electronics when encountered. Mer? Communication devices appear to be considered especially abhorrent. <laughs> Stay off of Twitter! proto sarcic cults generally value humility and self-sacrifice. And actually, the, the bit about um, immortality ends up uh, being a part of the SCP that I wanted to look at. Meet Luddites. Listen, <laughs> the, these are people for whom the only advanced technology that is acceptable is anything that they saw in existence. Oh, thank you, Paradox Cat. I'm... I still feel like, as in all things, I understand that I am a little bit of an outsider. Um, I quite enjoy VTubing, although, like, I enjoy doing it, but I, I feel like I'm kind of on the outside. I'm not really in any sort of community. That's just kind of true for my general existence, though. <laughs> and I accept this, and it's, it's fine. 
it's it's a thing that I do. To them, existence is a documentary. <laughs> Basically. The ancestors of the Salominari likely settled in the Carpathian Basin between 1200 and 600 BCE. It is presently hypothesized that the Sar that the Sarkites assimilated the local Proto-Thracian people, eventually becoming the Dacians, and people recorded by ancient Greek and Roman source a people recorded by ancient Greek and Roman sources. A Sarkic stronghold, since classified as SCP was discovered in the southern Carpathians and is believed to have once been the heart of the Salominari cult. It has been hypothesized that the Salominari are related to, or one and the same, as the Dacian cult of Zalmoxis, having culturally melded with the ancient Proto-Thracian people. I just... <laughs> no, that's my dorselessness making itself known. And Narendina Owl, um, not everyone has to do collabs with other VTubers. I would like to do collabs. I mean, it, it's it's fun. I mean, I had Chris on my stream the other day, but but I feel like I don't know. May, maybe I'm a little bit on the outside. May, maybe I'm just a little bit odd, or like I I don't really like. I like I like VTubers. I'm I'm kind of picky about it. I'm not into it for its own sake though. Maybe that's, maybe that's it. It has been hypothesized that the Salominari are related to, or one and the same as the Dacian cult, do, 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 having culturally melded, do, 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 do. documents discovered at SCP and SCP-2191 suggest that the Salominari remained highly influential, albeit secretive, until the 15th century, possibly destroyed by John Hyundai. <laughs> a leading hun no, Hunyadi, a leading Hungarian military and political figure. Several boyars of Wallachia and Moldavia, most notably the Gutkled clan of Hungarian nobles, are now believed to have been under the control of the Solomonari, an influence that would lead to the development of neo sarcasism and its Western expansion. It remains debatable whether modern pra pra practitioners should be considered true Solomonari following what was discovered at SCP. Ugh. Most are located in isolated pockets throughout the Carpathians, with little to no c connection with one another. The religion in its current state is an amalgam of local folk traditions and Solominari blood rituals. Oh, one reason, by the way, that I, I haven't been doing a whole lot of collaborations is because streaming is just kind of a side thing that I am doing. Most of my time is taken up working on Down the Rabbit Hole. So, you know, finding time is a little bit tricky. The Church of the Red Harvest were discovered at SCP-2133 in 1936 by GRU Division P. The Foundation became aware of the sect shortly after gaining control of 2133 following the dissolution of the USSR. 2133 is an unnamed village located in the northern Ural Mountains whose denizens are the only known members of the Church of the Red Harvest. The church practices a regeneration ritual, their recent dead harvested as newborns from the turnip fields found throughout 2133, and we'll do- we, I don't know that we have time to read it in its entirety, but we'll take a peek. Members refer to the regenerative process as a part of an old covenant, one that cannot be broken and is to last until the return of paradise. Auditum. It is currently believed that the Church of the Red Harvest is directly controlled by a Karsist, Karsist Alka, located in a subterranean dwelling beneath the nearby mountains, connected to the village by a series of tunnels accessible via the village church. Neo sarcasm, why don't you kneel down and sark on my balls? The Vetula were initially mistaken for Agori due to several superficially similar rituals. Known to the Foundation since 1969, a Sarkic connection was only established in 2010 through extensive research. The Vetula command fear and respect among the rural poor in the Indian states of Ra Rajasthan, Him Himachal Pradesh, Yamu Jammu, and Kashmir. 
Haryana, Punjab, and Gujarat. Oh boy, I'm sorry to any Indians who are watching. <laughs> they trace their origins to Karsist Vasky, who, who they claim arrived from the Northwest, granting them his blessing and spreading a virul virulent plague to their enemies. Ah, how sweet. <laughs> the Church of the Eternal Mother is a small sect found, SCP-4476, deep in the South Louisiana Bayou. Oh, the Church of the Eternal Mother is a small sect found deep in the South Lazy... Uh, there's a missing article. Represents what is the oldest example of sarcasm being transplanted to the North American continent. Practiced exclusively by members of La Familia Natau, the rituals and practices of the Church can trace their lineage as far back as the fall of Gyarados. I know it's Gyaros. And the Carcist Mexa. First contacted by the Foundation in April of 2010, the majority of their rituals and specific re religious beliefs are still relatively unknown, as further research into the Natao family has been suspended following several recent setbacks. Oh no, Paradox Cat, I was referring to spreading the virulent plague. That's so sweet of them. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was saying. <laughs> Plague is supposed to be good for them, yeah. So, I realize we actually don't have time, unfortunately, to look at any more of sarcasm. Um, I've got work to do. But, we do need to look at art. Because we do have art. Do do. Wait. Oh god, is it busted. Nope, oh, there we go. I fixed it. Perfect. We have quite a bit of art. Um, so just FYI, I'm probably not going to share uh, reposted art. But there is lots of new art. First, yeah, it's art time. Um, they, they're, and like I said, there is quite a bit. Um, first... We have some from Ika Pika. We have a lot from Ika Pika, actually. First, we have a Valentine from Harpy Lauren, <laughs> who has brought you some monk shit tea chocolate. You wouldn't be mean enough to refuse, would you? No, thank you so much, Ika Pika. It's, it's lovely. Absolutely precious. Adorable Valentine. Look at I, I love the claws. I, I love the the talons on the wings as well. Such a good touch. Precious. Thank you. Uh, we have some more cursed shit from um, uh, Joe Rogan. Powerful J R E. Um, if I were to be a guest on the Joe Rogan Experience, Frederick Fat Nut Knutson talks about getting railed for six hours straight. Yeah, great, good, good, uh, good, 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 great. <laughs> Perfect. Farah has some more art for us as well. Two versions of how Lauren Owlfriend become, uh, welcome subscribers into the bonus bean room. <laughs> We have smash that bean button. <laughs> and time to say the line again, old man. <laughs> the Dumble Dungeon. <laughs> Goddamn perfect. Get out here, old man. <laughs> Thank you very much. From Farah. And we have we have some actual real life fan art. Some sculpture work, if you will, from Farah of a box it, the offspring of a rabbit and a box, which is definitely real and disproves evolution as we, un as we understand it. And look at that little standee boy. <laughs> the tail. Look at the tail. Oh my God. And then Lego Dumbledore <laughs> scale. <laughs> 
<laughs> the the funny thing is i haven't even watched all of the harry potter movies i've seen like the first three and i haven't read all the harry potter books when i was little i got bored of them part way through and yet the bonus bean room is a thing and farah also took full advantage of ika pika's uh transparent background on our on our soy woe jack lauren harpies Perfect. This is this is precisely what we needed for this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Then we have some more from Starry Feathers. A celebration of all of Fred's many fursonas, personas, sharksonas. It actually is remarkable, like how many different anthropomorphized versions of me exist. We have a non-anthropomorphized version, me playing a, a Gertie and a teacup. We'll look a little closer, but here they all are. I, You know, I, I feel like I need to explain each of these. Hold on. So this is just fucking me. And I should specify that outfit that I wear, that is just like some normal daily attire for me. Like when I go out, it's not, I swear, it's not me like trying to put on a character. I just really, I really like wearing a jacket and then corduroy over it and a scarf is nice. It's, it's, it's just what I fucking wear. <laughs> and then um, the owl logo. So the, the story behind the owl logo is um, I was using an owl from Dark Tranquility's music video for uh, Iridium. And then after a while, when I started getting more popular, um, I kind of felt like I was stealing it. And so I commissioned Anton Oxenuk to make a uh, his own sort of interpretation of it. Then the rabbit. The funny thing about the rabbit is that was something that entirely sprouted up organically out of Mike's chat. People just started drawing me as a rabbit. I was... It, it it just started happening and then other people saw the rabbit and were like, oh, that's Fred's persona and then started then started making that. The the classic Fred Owl was made by uh, Vex. Uh, Vex actually made my first piece of fan art ever and that is how they drew um, the owl. They basically made me a government assigned persona. Is is he reading Semenology 101? Yes. God damn it. <laughs> but no, uh, Vex designed the Fred Owl. Yeah. And that just that's where that came out of. The shark was actually something that um, I commissioned. The, the whale shark boy, after I made the furries video... I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll make a proper Sona for myself. And I, I decided to make it a whale shark and I got a ref sheet done. And then Vex did another ref sheet with a big old snooter that people know a little bit better now, I think. And then, of course, Lauren, uh, which was made in, like, which was made specifically as a rig. Like, Lauren didn't exist before, um, before the streams. Lauren was invented entirely for the streams, specifically. Uh, and I'm really glad that people like the design. It was it was made in conjunction with Kirpe, who did a fantastic job um, designing designing the boy. And I like how there there will be some more canon body for him, but right now there is no canon beyond what you're seeing right now. People have just kind of extrapolated. Ugh, voice crack. Ugh. They've sort of extrapolated for themselves. That is a very all of these are really sweet though. And true to form. I like that he's holding a bean. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you so much. I love I, I love all of these. Absolutely lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, from um Do I need to go back? Hold on. Let me make sure that I get this right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're good. Thank you so much, Starry Feathers. These are these are so lovely. <laughs> Jeez, Fred, how come your mom lets you have five personas? <laughs> the they're, they're, vast majority of them are government-assigned personas. And the shark was just made after the furries episode. Uh, we have some more shit posting from Ika Pika. Uh, Neosarkic. 
Ions suck dicks also embrace capitalism. <laughs> So we have we have um, Jack Septic Vinny as the Neo Sarkite, and then we have Mike Wad as the as the Proto Sarkic. <laughs> oh my God! Have you seen the drawing Kerpe posted on Twitter? Hold on, no, I don't think I have. I'm not. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Let me. You know what? Let me look. Trip art. Oh, are you talking about um, Twitter mutuals? Right. Wait a minute. Is that what you were talking? Oh, uh, you mean the Angie Lauren you accidentally manifested? Wait, where? Oh, you mean. You you mean this one? F wait. <laughs> when he was making my angry leave emote. I wa okay, so I didn't tell him this, but I was lurking and then when he started like after he st did this for a while, I came in and was like, "What is this?" and he was like, "Oh, no, we're just working on emotes." And then I didn't talk for like 15 or 20 minutes, and then he was like, "Okay, now that Fred is gone, we can keep working on this." <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't left. I was just lurking. He just assumed I was gone. <laughs> oh, we have uh, Viomus again returning, aka Brew. And gotcha, scared you. We have we we have a visual representation of. It looks like 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 more Ika Pika. Oh my god, we have more from Ika Pika and Starry Feathers. <laughs> oh no! Lovatar is typically depicted as beautiful, voluptuous, often to unrealistic extremes. Claw-like fingers and toes. <laughs> as well as a pair of horns. Oh my god. Harpy Lauren is just Clavagar Lovatar. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the deep lore. Oh, she's a Sarkic. She, she's a, she's not just a Sarkic, she's a Clavagar. Aw, baby. <laughs> Thank you, Ika Pika. And we have, we have another, um... Ugh brain why is my brain is failing me so bad it's a um collage <laughs> uh oh god do i you know what i'm gonna move over to the left for this one we have decidui plus lauren aka lauren with his hood up yeah okay so i i did a thing i don't know how many of you saw this but i did a thing on my twitter let me let me just pull it up real quick. I I had brain rot last night, so I just kind of made something. Like I was having trouble focusing on writing, so I made this while I waited. Hold on. I'm gonna turn this up. That's an owl pass. That's another owl pass. Smash. <laughs> I spent too long on that. Way too long on that. I actually did my best to, um, I, I, you know what? I'll show it. If you look carefully, you can see that I moved the text. Watch. See, I moved it with, um, the layout moving as well to make it look as natural as possible. Uh, right. Collage. We have 
dorselessness Lauren. Decidui plus Lauren, aka Lauren with his hood up. <laughs> Beautiful. Perfect. Be bean, 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 bean. It's a lot of bean buttons now. Meat cult. Yep, it, it's the meat cult time. No bitches. No bitches. Cthulhu von Hagen. Beautiful. I love these. Opening statement. Good day, my fellow semen retainer. <laughs> <laughs> Monk, yep, sipping, uh, slurp, slurp, yum, yum, yum. Goth Lauren. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Owls have thumbs. I, ac I accidentally hit the launch everything button. <laughs> I, I, it must be because I just hit all of the B. I thought I just hit all of the beam buttons. Staring contest with chat. I like how chat just has a ton of eyes. Crab. 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 The crypto clown hour. <laughs> I swear to God, uh, too many of my streams just start with crypto clowning. <laughs> Meat. <laughs> God, that face. What is that face? Infinite BJ card. <laughs> Mike owes me. Mike owes me, damn it. God vor. How do I draw that safe for work? <laughs> you don't. You just don't. Smash or pass? Smash. Hoot, bitch. Perfect. Thank you so much. I, I love this. Starry feathers. Two thumbs up. Thumbs are for bitches, though. But we make it work. All right. That's going to be everything. Thank you so much for the art and for tuning in for the meat. We are going to look for a proper raid target. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We've got... Oh. Rev is playing Hitman 2. Yeah, sure. Let's raid Rev. And our... Uh, oh, wait. Uh, slash. Rev Scarecrow. Thank you very much, everyone. And we're going to raid Rev. Hang out if you would like to watch Rev play some Hitman 2. If not, that's chill. You do your own thing. I personally am going to uh, get to work but I'll see all of you on Thursday. I'm still working out precisely what I'm going to do. It'll depend on what my energy levels are like. We might do um, That Which Faith Demands. We might do the Final Fantasy House. Um, we've, got, we've got quite a few things that we could potentially do. I'll see you all soon. Oh, and by the way, our raid message, our raid message is no bitches. No bitches. <laughs>